uh, my name is Autumn Walters and I am currently a senior here at UNC Charlotte. I am double majoring in psychology and Spanish. I am a member of the Spanish club CEPA on campus. My name is Ray Caps. I am a college student. My name is Kate. I am a college student. I'm a junior uh, majoring in public health. I am a small business owner um, of six years now. I would consider myself a very creative person, a dog lover. I am a non-traditional college student. And I have a disability. I have chronic daily migraine. And I have uh, Crohn's disease. And I have bipolar disorder, PTSD, and anxiety. I have a service dog, but I'm more specifically a guide dog. And I have multiple disabilities. Blindness, functional neurological disorder, gastroparesis, small fiber neuropathy, um, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and unfortunately there's more on that list. I was diagnosed with my Crohn's disease back when I was in 10th grade, so I was 15. I got really sick the summer before 10th grade. I didn't know if it was an allergy or I had no idea what it was. I've always been legally blind and then I actually lost more vision my senior year, which I'm not supposed to. It just worsened a lot. I can't see a lot um, on those reading, reading charts at all. And then for my chronic illnesses, um, which are all my invisible disabilities for the most part, um, I was diagnosed within the past year and a half. Being diagnosed at such a young age uh, was very scary because, you know, I'm 15, so I'm already going through like the teenagehood of trying to figure out who I am and my identity and stuff like that. And then next thing you know, this doctor gives me this label of like, you have an autoimmune disease, you have Crohn's disease. And so having that like label tacked onto me when I'm at so young, trying to already figure out like who I am, really just changed my self-perception. And you know, I was battling a lot of depression during this time. Next thing you know, I get this label put on me. And so I really convinced myself like, okay, this is who I am, I'm sick. And I really let my illness define me. I was losing weight, I was skipping class, I was visibly getting sick and paler and just I looked terrible. You know, when I finally got diagnosed, you know, I told all my friends, but they kind of were like, oh my goodness, you have Crohn's disease? Well, like, that's your identity now. Like, we're gonna constantly mention your disease to you and constantly make jokes about it. They kind of put that as my identity in the friend group. Like, oh, she's the sick one. Like, oh, she's the one with the bathroom disease and stuff like that. And it just, at the moment, I, it really gave into my thought of, oh my goodness, this is my, this is my identity. When I was first diagnosed, I was pretty ashamed. Um, I wasn't happy, pretty embarrassed, so I was kind of defeated. Now I'm just like, you know what? Like, this is a part of who I am. If people can't like that, then, that's on them. Um, it has helped me build confidence. It's helped me um, learn how to continue to persevere. Um, it showed me that I'm hardworking, um, that I'm strong and capable. I have continuous uh, head pain 24 7. The level fluctuates, but it never dissipates. Since when I was first diagnosed, um, I'm more aware of my limitations and capabilities. Beginning, I thought that I worked hard enough and I wanted something, desired it bad enough that I could achieve anything. Um, over the years, I have noted, I've come to learn that I have, you know, if there are limits to my abilities, that doesn't mean I still can't achieve my goal and be successful. So I have what's called an invisible illness, meaning that like when you look at me from the outside, you can't really tell that I am sick um, because I appear healthy from the outside. So when I tell people about my illness, um, whether it be like an employer at a job or just friends, um, they're usually very shocked and they do the whole, well, you don't look sick kind of thing, which gets very annoying after time because I mean, I shouldn't have to look sick to prove, I guess not even prove to you that like I have a real illness, you know? They question me, they don't believe me because I look completely healthy. <laughs> I mean, I look completely healthy and nobody could tell that I have six 
class chronic illness of disorders. And, you know, they don't believe me. Um, and they don't understand. You know? Whenever, like, I'm in a relationship, I always tell them that I have a disorder. And the last two of my relationships, they threw it in my face that I have bipolar. Or they made it seem like I was making it up that I had a disorder because I hide my disability really well. Do you feel like you have to hide your disability to fit in? Yes. I feel like I'm seen as different or abnormal when people realize, oh, you have a disability. It's, um, they're, you're not seen the same. You're not seen as the person you would be. You were seen as, or all they knew was you as someone who was otherwise healthy. And I've actually heard this from a couple of family members. They've seen a change in the way that they view me because they couldn't have, couldn't imagine what it's like to live, live it in my body, even for a day or two. My family's perception of me has changed. Um, because as I get older and I keep being persistent and trying harder to get my goals that they're more proud of me that they see that I'm trying to be more than just like a bump on a log or a statistic. My instructor said to me, you would be a great nurse if you did not have migraine. So that really made me aware of how much my disability impacts my, you know, what I'm able to do and how I'm seen. My pain fluctuates, it's consistent, but the level fluctuates. And I believe that people will see me when I'm in a high state of pain and then will take what I'm able to do in that situation and apply it to any situation. You can't see pain um, that you're experiencing because they will often assume that I'm only able to achieve as much as I am or would be if I was in high pain. And they don't realize that if I'm in low pain, I can pretty much carry on as normal. I get comments a lot about, you can eat food or when are you coming up for that? Go get your breakfast. And I'm like, I've already eaten, or I physically can't eat. eat. And they're like, but you have to eat. And I'm like, I promise I'm eating. I promise I'm getting my nutrition. Please don't remind me of my paralyzed stomach. So I used to not see myself as part of like a broader disability culture or group because like I said, I have an invisible illness. So in my mind, I just kind of felt like, oh, well, like I don't really have disability. Like I'm not in a wheelchair. I don't, you know, have a visible illness. So I just kind of thought, well, I'm not really disabled. And it actually wasn't until I got into UNC Charlotte and I enrolled in like a few months before the semester actually started, the Office of Disability, I got an email from them that I'm sure was sent out to almost everybody saying like, hey, if you have, you know, medical issues or something like that, like get the right documentation and you can get registered with the Office of Disability. And I looked into it and I called and I talked to some people there and I was like, oh my goodness, like I very much qualify for this. I very much, you know, need the accommodations that the Office of Disability thankfully provide for me. And I'm very thankful for that. And that's when I started like really getting comfortable with using the word disability to describe myself because I do have a disability. Having invisible illnesses are hard to connect with other people because it's nice being on the student advisory board because um, I get to like work with other people with disabilities. Connecting with other, especially college students who have a disability has helped me feel like I am part of a disability culture and broader group. Also, I do know of organizations on campus that are for people who have disabilities, whether that be visible or invisible illnesses, and so that really helps build community.
um, amongst uh, people with disabilities at UNC Charlotte. And then also there's a student advisory board for the Office of Disability. And it's basically a board of students that meet probably once a month. And we basically talk about how can we make UNC Charlotte more accessible. In the beginning, I did not ever want to talk about my disability or admit to it. Um, there was a bit of shame involved and being seen as weak.
their horses are set up. When they would look at me, I would look, you could, it would look perfectly fine and normal, and I had a more challenging time getting them to allow me accommodations, allow me to use my accommodations. I had to kind of, in some rare instances, fight for them. disabilities and they're going to have accommodations and this is why you know having strict deadlines and having no leeway room whatsoever is not fair to them. I mean today I um, went in to take a test. Uh, I normally schedule it with PDS um, and I completely forgot to do brain fox and I walk into a very small print paper exam. I do have the accommodation of large print. I do have the accommodation of computer testing. Um, and that was not meant today. I definitely feel like some disabilities are more readily included than others, especially um, visible illnesses. It's like, oh, well, there's no disputing that you're handicapped or disabled because I clearly see it. I think there's a lack of knowledge about other disabilities that would be quote unquote invisible and therefore they're not as a you're not as accommodated with when you have that kind of disability. And I don't think it's intentional. I think there's just a lack of information and knowledge. In terms of inclusion and being included in a friend group, usually people who are invisible and do not, uh, with invisible disabilities and do not look sick are more readily to be included in friends because they don't quote unquote look, look sick or look weird. The people with physical disabilities, you know, are less likely to, you know, be in those sort of groups because they look that way. Um, but in terms of um, accommodations, I feel like it's the opposite. There is definitely like certain stigmas attached to having invisible illnesses. The stereotype isn't isn't always what's true, you know. Um, to be disabled, you don't have to look a certain way, or act a certain way, or do certain things. Definitely experienced microaggressions with my disease. Um, some of the ones I can think off the top of my head are just, you know, people making really rude jokes like, hey, you have an irritable bowel disease. Where's the nearest bathroom? You're supposed to know where the nearest bathroom is, don't you? Like, just out of nowhere. And I, you know, I sit there and I go, what in the world did you just say to me? Like, that is so, you know, offensive. You know what I mean? Or if I, you know, excuse myself from a group of people to go use the bathroom and these people do know about my disease, sometimes I, I've had people kind of make the joke of like, oh, well, she's going to be in there for a while. And those are, the, you know, those are very hurtful and very, just very much out of line. It's like in uh, Norm's Loft yesterday. That was a microaggression. Um, when something about to do like crazy. So something about like.
I mean, the testing center is great to be able to, you know, have a quiet environment, um, to have a fix in the time that they're allowed to give, but you're absent every day, every test day during class. And so you are kind of questioned and um, people wonder, why are you never here? Sometimes I do have to cancel or reschedule um, meetings or plans and people say, oh, she has a headache again, as if I'm using it as an excuse to get out of things. And they will label it as like, oh, just a headache. So, some of the things that have come to mind are one, especially pertaining to college. Oh, black people don't go to college. What am I doing here? I'm in college. <laughs> but also to just somewhat stop the amount of microaggressions that were happening to me um, is very much to put my foot down and say, you can't say that. And if they ask like, oh, well, why can't I make that joke? Get them to explain their own joke. Get them to sit there and be like, no, tell me why you think that's funny and tell me why you think that's okay. And nine out of 10 times when the person making a microaggression really has to say out loud what the joke was, they start to think, hmm, I can understand why that's not funny and kind of hurtful. It's my disease, it's my illness, and it's my body, and your microaggressions are affecting me, and they're hurting me. So I'm 100% right to put my foot down and say, you cannot say that. I would probably assume that there's definitely a good amount of people on our student body who really don't understand what it's like to have a disability, nor do they really know the correct way of like, how to support someone with a disability and I think that just comes from experience and also being willing to learn because you can sit down with the entire student body and have this like one hour two hour lecture about like oh this is how to you know treat someone with a disability and this is how specific ways you can support them and blah 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 but if that person is not willing to learn and not willing to apply that knowledge to their lives then it's for nothing. But something that the Office of Disability, you know, being on the Student Advisory Board, we've been trying to get um, started again is actually like two of us, like the representative from the board, going into classrooms and just presenting for 20 minutes of like, this, this is what it's, this is how you can support your friend or classmate that has a disability. Unless you have a disability, it's hard to know about it and understand it or you know somebody who has, like if you don't have that personal experience, it's hard to operate in such a way where you, know, you, are, you are continuously respectful and not discriminating against social disabilities. But I don't think it's ever intentional, I just think it comes from ignorance. There's no difference between you and someone with a disability and you shouldn't treat them any differently. And 
it could easily you know, be you and how would you want to be treated. If I could tell a student body anything, I would tell them not to assume. Because often your assumptions are very far from the truth, especially when it comes to disabilities and health and capabilities, you know, but there have been countless times where people have assumed, I can't do this because, oh, I'm in pain, or I can't see, or, um, oh, I'm partially paralyzed, which, yeah, there are some things I can't do during that, that period of time, but I have learned my ways around that. That, I, that I'm still pretty independent. Um, so don't don't assume. Um, you know, in, if you think somebody needs help, um, always ask. Um, and get to know people with disabilities. Um, they're people, um, and they always have. They have they have feelings too. They want friends. <laughs> um, we're human just like you. We want to do fun things and you know enjoy college. I have Crohn's disease, but I have still accomplished so much in my life, and this is only the beginning. I'm a Girl Scout Gold Award. I am currently a senior in college taking 18 credit hours, which is something I never thought I would be able to handle, but here I am. I am currently, my college career is currently only going to be two and a half years because I work super hard, and that's with a disease that affects everything about my body every day of my life and I'm extremely proud of myself for everything I have accomplished. I have Crohn's disease but I'm honestly at the end of the day grateful for the disease that I have because it has taught me so much and made me a million times stronger than I once was. So I have migraine and I am a college student, non-traditional college student. I have been at UNCC since 2014. I managed to keep 4.0 GPA. Um, I am capable and I'm smart. Um, that's something that no disability could take away. It might not be the way I plan, but I'm gonna achieve what I set out to do.